So today, Dr. Schultz, I wanted to talk about other types of scans that maybe we don't always talk about in prostate cancer. I think a lot of times when patients are so focused on cancer, they're not thinking about their heart or maybe some of the other levels that need to be checked. And I've heard story after story from talking to you where men have come in to get their prostates checked and then they found out you sent them maybe to go get a calcium scan or something of that sort. And they found out that they had tremendous plaque or something and that they were at risk of a heart attack. So this is a huge issue, especially considering how heart disease and heart attacks are so prevalent in the U.S. even over prostate cancer and I thought we could bring this to light in order to maybe help you know get encourage men to get some of these other scans so let's talk about the calcium scan for the first time can you can you talk about what it is and the origins of it it's a wonderful thing to cover because we're blessed in the prostate world with uh, many men having low-grade types of disease that will never endanger their lives and yet they go to great lengths to try and make sure that they handle their prostate cancer with professionalism and precision. And that is appropriate, of course. But if we try and contextualize the, the idea of just helping people to both live longer and live better, we have to recognize the fact that many of our prostate cancer patients are at much greater risk of dying from heart-related problems, cardiovascular disease, rather than from prostate cancer. And like many men have maybe not checked their PSA or, or don't watch their blood pressure, uh, it's very, very common for people not to screen for heart disease. People think that if you check your cholesterol level and the cholesterol level is good, that that's going to be enough. Cholesterol is kind of like a, I suppose, like a PSA. It can give you a sign that there's a problem. But you can have a, quite a bit of cardiovascular disease with a normal cholesterol level. And Cardiovascular disease is much more unforgiving than prostate cancer. Prostate cancer, you can see things coming miles away and you get a, a 10 year lead time in, uh, in who's likely to get into problems, whereas with heart disease, something can happen overnight. So what is the scan that you're referring to? It's a simple CAT scan, similar to the technology that's used for PSMA PET scans, but they only scan through the coronary arteries. There's no injections associated with it. It takes about five minutes. And what they do is they profile uh, the uh, individuals that go through these scans and tell them you have the same amount of plaque as other uh, individuals your age, women can do this as well as men, or less plaque than people your age, or more plaque than people your age. And that information then can be used to calculate the likelihood of a cardiovascular event in the next 10 years. This is really useful information. Uh, the American Heart Association has come out in support of it in 2018 took them a while because it was uh, commercially available like in 2004. But finally they're, they're, they're supporting it and I've been supporting this for a long time because any preventable death, whether it's through lowering one's risk of uh, dying of prostate cancer or cardiovascular disease is important. And these scans help give you a context where you as an individual fit in the risk spectrum for having a heart attack in the next 10 years. So for someone looking to get this scan, what is the official name of the scan and where is it available? So it's called a CT, that's a CAT scan, CT scan for coronary calcium score. Any doctor can order it. The, uh, it just takes a regular old prescription and it's widely available at radiology centers and hospitals around the country. If insurance refuses to pay for it, which sometimes they will because they call it a screening test rather than a diagnostic test, uh, the out-of-pocket expense, expense may be around 150 bucks. So it's very affordable and it gives you powerful information about where you stand in the risk spectrum. There's a very nice online tool called the MESA calculator. You can just Google this and after you get the scan done, it generates a score called an Agustin score. You can put it into this calculator, along with your age and your cholesterol levels, your blood pressure and all these sorts of things. And it will spit out an actual prediction of risk of heart attack in the next 10 years. It could be 2%, it could be 20%. There's a lot that people can do to change their future risk of heart attack. Of course, we're all aware of diet and exercise, but cholesterol pills, um, cardiology referrals for, for scans to make sure there's no overt blockage in the blood vessels, all these deeper dives into preventing future cardiovascular events. At what age should someone start getting this scan? So men 
start to become at increased risk for cardiovascular events in their 40s, believe it or not. Seems very young, but in some individuals, they're forming a lot of plaque. So what are these scans measuring? The reason that they're so useful is because historically people have been thinking, well, how much cholesterol is in my blood? That's what's dangerous. But it's really about how much cholesterol sticks to the walls of the arteries, and there it creates inflammation and scarring and bulges sometimes. They're called, uh, you know, these plaques that can bulge in and sometimes even block the arteries. That's the danger of cardiovascular disease is if it blocks blood flow to a critical organ like the heart, and in this case we're talking about the... Um, the coronary arteries, or to the brain, which we're talking about the carotid arteries. That's another type of screening tool that can be done. They can do an ultrasound of the neck and see if there's incipient blockage or even plaque in the carotid arteries. The simple thing to do for these patients if they uh, are found to have plaque is to start a cholesterol pill. People think of cholesterol pills as agents to lower cholesterol in the blood, but they also reverse plaque, or at least forestall formation of future plaque. So this process of, of uh, thinking long term over the next 10 to 20 years is a mindset that we've developed in the field of prostate cancer, but it's not a pervasive mindset in the office of an average family physician where they're just putting out fires and trying to get you through the day, solve the problems. They're not thinking about how can we have healthy vasculature 10 to 20 years in the future. This type of thinking makes a lot of sense in our prostate cancer patients whose average age is around 60 or 65, and we're hoping they can get another good 20 plus years out of these aging bodies. It's the vasculature that we need to be babying. We can't get a, a vascular transplant. We have to survive with the ones we've been given and statin medications, and of course, motivation for a better diet. When people see that they have a lot of plaque, that it can be very motivating to change their lifestyle. There's a lot of good things that can come out of having a clear understanding of where your vasculature stands. So let's talk about cholesterol pills for a minute. There's actually some good press, there's some bad press. I think patients often feel like, oh, I have to go on a cholesterol pill, what about the side effects? So can you break down what those are? Are there really, you know, what side effects have you seen in the real day-to-day -day practice and kind of handle some of the, the bad press that's gotten? That's absolutely right. And it turns out that about 10% of the population who takes, we call them statin medications, cholesterol pills, can't tolerate them. They may develop muscle aches, liver problems, um, and this is, a uh, big contingent of people. There's probably like 60 or 70 million people taking these pills in the United States. That means if 10% of those people, six or seven million people, have taken a pill and found that it didn't agree with them, that's a big industry catering to those people and the upset and the concern. It, is the upside of these medications worth the risks? Well, you can mitigate the risk by monitoring closely and stopping the pills in those it's poorly tolerated. But the upside is about a 50% reduction in the risk of heart attacks in the future. And of course, for the 90% of people that don't have any side effects, these medications are inexpensive. It's a big upside for people who are forming excess plaque. It is a frightening proposition for many people to take any pharmaceutical, but we always have to look at the risk-benefit ratio. Ideally, we don't want to take any medications. Just go on a diet, improve your lifestyle. Of course, all those things are good. But to deny yourself powerful medicines that are proven to reduce the risk of heart attacks by 50% in people that have excess plaque seems rather short-sighted. So how do these cholesterol drugs work? Are they thinning the blood? Are they removing plaque? I think that's a question I get oftentimes, especially with the international audience. Well, it does lower uh, LDL cholesterol, which is this um, molecule, this, this fatty molecule that gets into the arterial wall and creates inflammation. There's a very obvious lowering of the amount of cholesterol in the blood and therefore less cholesterol to get into the arterial walls. But there's also a direct anti-inflammatory effect. There's a reaction in the arterial walls against this uh, cholesterol uh, molecule that sits that gets in there and when that inflammation occurs it causes scar tissue and, and inflammation. And these statin drugs, for some reason, have an anti-inflammatory effect at that level as well. So they talk about the cholesterol pills stabilizing plaque. So if there's ongoing inflammation, think of like a, a pimple on your skin, but on the inside lining of the vasculature. And so these medications have a anti-inflammatory effect. They're gonna calm down that inflammatory effect. So when someone's getting you know, their labs done, um, one thing I've heard 
regarding inflammation is a C-reactive protein. So is that what the level is that would cause somebody, is that what's measuring the inflammation and is that what the statins would be treating? Yes, uh, C-reactive protein is a very nonspecific inf inflammatory measure, but what we track closely with medications when we use them, the statin medications, is the LDL level, the bad cholesterol level. So your average American's running around with an LDL of perhaps 120, 140, something of that nature, and you can bring it down to some degree with diet, maybe around 80 or 90. But the target LDL for someone that's had a heart attack in the cardiology world is to get the LDL down to around 50 or 60. And that's not gonna happen unless you get on some sort of medication. We should me mention briefly that there is a second tier and third tier uh, uh, type of pharmaceuticals if the statins are poorly tolerated. There's an injectable medicine called Repatha, which is very effective and doesn't have all the side effects that statins do. There's also a medication called Zetia that stops absorption from the diet, the cholesterol coming out of the intestines into the bloodstream. And it's not as potent as the statins are, but it's it does have value, and sometimes it's used in combination with statins or with, uh, uh, with Rapatha. So the statins themselves stop the synthesis of cholesterol in the liver. That's how they lower LDL levels, uh, because the majority of the LDL cholesterol comes from our own production internally. Most of it doesn't come from the diet. So Zetia, which blocks dietary LDL, is not going to have as big an impact as the statins or Rapatha will but it still has some value. So one thing I wanted to touch upon that I've heard Dr. Moya talk about um, to a huge degree because it matters so much, especially in the U.S. right now, is the concept that even if people lose, let, we have an obesity um, epidemic. And so it's interesting to me because he was talking about that even if people lose like 10% of their body weight, their cardiovascular system is relieved greatly. So can you talk about the links between weight loss and the cardiovascular system? Because I know we talk about like a great diet, I know we talk about exercise, but I don't think people relate the um, impact that that can have with even just a 10% weight loss. Right, and it's usually the cardiovascular system that's the weak link in people that are overweight. Uh, and why is that? Well, they run higher blood sugar levels, they run higher cholesterol levels. They run higher blood pressure levels. All these things are putting greater strain on the, on the lining of the, uh, the vasculature. So weight loss touches on all of those things and improves all those uh, variables in a favorable way. So one of the things that I've heard is that statins can have a direct relation not only to helping with the vascular system, but cure rates when it comes to radiation patients. Can you explain that? Well, the reason for it is not entirely understood. It's just an observable fact. Uh, insurance companies have these large databases on pay who has prostate cancer, who's taking what medications, and when they look at prostate cancer patients who undergo radiation for cure, those that are and are not taking statin medications for other reasons, presumably for their cholesterol, they can see that the cure rates come out higher in the men that are taking statins as opposed to those who are not. And this has been looked at not once but several times, confirming that for some reason, statin medications have a, um, a favorable impact on cure rates in men who are undergoing radiation. Given the fact that there are um, relatively few side effects for most people, and those that do have side effects, they can usually be managed safely, it seems reasonable for men who are uh, undergoing radiation for cure to consider adding a statin medication to their to their other therapy. So my last question is, should every man over the age of 40 absolutely get the scan? Is there anybody who shouldn't get it? I think the answer is yes. I think just as we have tried to press people to get PSA testing starting at age 40 or 45, that, uh, and I think PSA testing has got a potential downside. Sometimes people fall into the clutches of an overenthusiastic therapeutic surgeons who want to operate on people that don't even need an operation. There are dangers to doing PSA testing, but the general sense is that it, there's more upside than downside and that we should start PSA testing at age 40 or 45 to make sure we don't allow a curable prostate cancer to get outside the prostate and wreak havoc. I think the argument's much stronger for heart scans, given the fact that the mortality rates are so much higher and heart disease is so much more dangerous than prostate cancer. And these scans do not have to be performed every year. You could probably undergo a, a heart a CT scan for coronary calcium score every five to seven years. And as long as there's very little, if any, plaque, you don't have to do anything. You can comfortably tell your doctor who wants to treat your high cholesterol levels, 
I don't need it. I have a normal or a clear scan. I'm not forming any plaque. My high cholesterol levels aren't hurting me. And you say, well, how could a high cholesterol not hurt? There are tests actually to look at whether the cholesterol missiles are large, which don't get into the arterial wall, or small. And those are the ones that create problems. So some people have high cholesterol levels that do not create plaque and uh, they don't need cholesterol pills. Uh, so yes, I think that it should be a universal uh, screening tool for all men, and at some point for women as well. I, I'm not a specialist in female health, and I'm not sure what, would it be at uh, menopause or sometime thereafter, but women get heart disease as well, and there's no reason for us to be surprised by this anymore. We've all heard, if you get to be my age, of someone who was go doing just fine, and all of a sudden they're gone, because of an unexpected heart attack. These uh, unexpected disasters can be prevented if people will check behind the scenes and determine if there's any excess plaque. Today we talked about calcium scans for your heart. The cardiovascular system, as we all know, is extremely important, but the thing I want to remind you about is your quality of life and your longevity is not just fighting prostate cancer, but how your overall health is. This scan is $150 if you don't have insurance. Most insurances cover it, it's everywhere, and you don't have to take a contrast for it. So the important thing I want you to remember is go get it. It's important to know what your cardiovascular situation is so that we don't have any surprise events. We want to make sure that you guys live the best life that you possibly can, even in the midst of cancer, and this is a big part of it. If you would like more information, you can visit our website, pcri.org. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're gonna come out with new prostate cancer videos, but also some men's health videos just like this to help remind you to take care of yourself. We care about you. You are not alone. I hope you have a great day.